All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the Youngstown Computer Show. I am Joe Danier, owner of Youngstown Computer, and this is what we get to do here on Saturdays. We get to talk about things that are happening in tech. I get to open the floor to all of you, and if you have any questions, comments, or uh, want to put a topic on any line, go ahead and give us a call, 330-729-9977. Uh, last week, we were talking a lot of bit about uh, electric vehicles and uh, Tesla. I took a road trip, and I shared some of my story with what we did. Uh, it spawned a lot of questions that I didn't have a, t- a chance to answer because of the abbreviation show uh, last week and how things uh, were. So let me take this minute and I'm going to read some of those comments. So to bring everybody up to speed, I took a road trip with electric vehicle. Uh, The destination of the trip was beyond what the range could accommodate in the car. So I had to stop and get charged along the way. So I got to experience what it's like to instead of going to the gas station at a breakneck seven minute stop, I had to do 30 and 40 minute stops. And so I shared my experiences a little bit with that. Uh, One person says, wow, you just convinced me that I never want to deal with the, with an electric car ever. And, uh, and I'll tell you this though, like this is sort of uh, beginning times with electric vehicles. So it's going to be, it's, it's in its most rough form. Okay, there aren't a lot of charging stations and it takes a long time to charge. But in the end, after this gets, you know, there becomes more cars, you're going to see the superchargers are going to be more plentiful. The costs are going to come down and uh, and, and it's going to be a better experience. It's more competitive with what uh, you're going to be on, you know, on the gasoline end. Um, I don't ever think it's going to be just as fast. Um, you know, I, I just don't think we're ever going to get there where you're going to be able to charge a battery without damaging the battery. I'm sure there's a way of doing it, but then you take this, you know, twenty thousand dollar battery in your car and you uh, melt it down because you try to push current into it too quickly. Um, you know, so it's it's just going to take it's going to take shape. So uh, where it was uh, mildly inconvenient, I, I I did do it. It took longer per stop, but uh, once you got to a stop, it was pretty uh, pretty simple. Um, so I mean I give it I give it probably three stars. Okay, it has a long way to come before I'll say yeah it was just as easy. All right, did you ever try cutting your hair with rechargeable clippers? Uh, if you have to know, you need a good hat. Uh, okay, so it, so electric clippers when it starts lo- getting to the end of its life, it, the motor starts running in slow. Honestly, I've never gotten to the point where there was any uh, performance degradation because of the battery range. It, it runs sort of the same, and I'm guessing I've never run it out, so I don't know what it's like to have not enough. Uh, I don't know if it fizzles, if it goes down to like 10 miles an hour. I just I just don't know, but uh, obviously the author of that uh, text message, uh, you know, n- not a good idea to have something that's important that the battery runs down on is the um, – yeah – Anyway, a second part of the topic was having this sort of artificial intelligent and autopilot and autonomous vehicles where cars can kind of do their own thing. So, you know, w- the, the statistics were that we're, in our, we're not in our car a majority of the time. So 95% of the time, our cars are in the driveway or in the garage or sitting in a parking lot with us not behind the wheel, right? So with the ar- autonomous uh, theory here that you can allow your car to wander away from you and serve other purposes while you're usually somewhere. So you're at work, the car wanders away, uh, it finds its way back to you when you usually leave work and then so you really don't know that it's been gone. Uh, then you can allow your car to participate in in serving other people. The, su- the subscription model, rather than you owning your car, you just basically pay for usage of a car rather than your car. Uh, you hit a button on your phone and an autonomous vehicle that's closest to you comes and finds you and wanders or, or takes you to wherever you need to go. Uh, this person says, uh, Michael Knight had a car named Kit that would pick him up if they were separated. Yes, for sure. Uh, Joe, can you speak about the cost of charging on your trip? Yes, very important here. Now, for the first three months of ownership of a, of a Tesla, uh, you get free supercharging. So that trip that I, I took cost me absolutely nothing. Uh, now, as far as when, it, when, when you do have to pay for it, you are basically paying per minute. And I'm, I'm going to get this wrong, but just go with me because it's going to be close to this. I believe it is 30 cents per minute. And I think there's like a 50 cent connection fee. So if you charge for 30 minutes and you're paying 30 cents a minute, but that's like nine bucks, right? For, for a charge up. So you get a full charge. Now, comparing that with a $30 charge up, your, your $30 gas filling, you're still about one third the cost, but the superchargers are about, I would say 10 bucks for a, a, a full fill up. Now, if you didn't want to go the full 30 minutes, if you wanted to just top off, uh, you can get away with much cheaper because uh, I'm, I'm telling you what basically how this happens 
is it charges up super quick during the beginning of the charge. So let's just say they add, add the capacity of these batteries so you get 400 miles, right? And so maybe you only charge till it gets to 200 miles. That way it gets to 200 miles like in three or four minutes of charging, and then you're back on your way again because that's when you're getting the best bang for your buck. As, it's, as the charge slows down as the battery gets filled, it takes longer and longer to fill those, uh, you know, fill those individual batteries and and that's what I'm saying. You're even though you're paying a, a flat thirty cents per minute of charging, you might be charging at a way less rate. So again, they might graduate it based on the speed of charging. I don't know. It might be at full charge, it's thirty cents, and then if it slows down, it goes half of that. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm making a rough estimate that it's still cheaper, even if it's at the top end of that, which is you're you're paying for a, a lesser charge uh, at ten bucks a fill. So I hope that answered your question. Um, all right. So that's uh, that's about. Uh, the summary of the of the Tesla. There's still a lot of, of interest. Uh, you know, just yesterday there was an article, uh, and, and I'm telling you, we were a week a week ahead of this news story. But uh, there was uh, Elon Musk uh, brought up a, a tweet that basically said that they were going to in the r really near future. I think this is April 22nd. They're going to release some uh, some updates to the Neuronet and some product equipment or some autopilot equipment uh, that they want to compete with Uber. And Lyft, okay. So your car, while you're at work, can go be an Uber and Lyft for somebody else. Now I'm telling you, that is really optimistic. And this is sort of like Elon Musk talk, where he, you know, he's very optimistic guy, and he talks about things as if they're reality, and they might not be as close to reality as he he sees. But he always seems to come through in the end. So even if he's talking about stuff that we can't visualize and see on the marketplace right now, he's he's in a lab seeing this stuff work. So I have to go along with it that we're probably less than a year in development before we start seeing these things on the road where you, cars can drive themselves around. I mean, we, we see that in Las Vegas where they have buses that go up and down the strip completely autonomous. They are completely uh, managed by software and cameras and sensors. So it, this probably isn't very far off. Now, what I'm waiting to see with Tesla is they, they have this summon feature that allows your car to find you, come to you. Wherever your phone is, it comes, comes to you. So if you're standing at the door waiting to be picked up, this thing, you hit the summon button, it pulls out of the parking spot, and then it, it navigates its way around the parking lot and finds you. And also on the reverse, you drop yourself out the door, hit park, it goes around the parking lot and looks for a spot and parks itself. Now, that is pretty amazing, and I, I foresee that being more of a reality uh, quicker than, you know, the navigating streets and seeing street signs and, and traffic lights and stop signs and other vehicles and pedestrians and all that kind of stuff. That is going to take a significant amount of regulation. You know, uh, we're hoping that when the government looks at this, you know, they don't want to stifle the innovation that this is going to happen. But at the same time, you don't want these rogue machines, uh, you, you know, being able to run people down. Uh, you just hope that there's a bunch of safety measures in place. So they've got to convince regulators that these things are safe to let loose without a driver behind it. Uh, I believe it was in China. There was a bunch of like hacker types that. Uh, they, they published a video on YouTube where they laid down some reflective stickers on the ground and they were able to take a Tesla that was on autopilot. And because the reflective stickers tricked the, the Tesla into thinking those were like lane markings, that the, uh, that, that the car veered away from those stickers. So maybe if nobody's messing with the Teslas, they'll be just fine. They won't run people down. They got special protections for mowing people down and crashing into things. But what when people start assaulting, uh, you know, they, they start trying to get into their systems and they start trying to mess with them. You know, how how are we going to defend against that? Because not only are you dealing with natural consequences, you're you're also dealing with people who have it out for you. And I, I don't know what it is about electric cars, but people really do hate them. Uh, you know, from at, at the supercharging spots that, you know, trucks are parking so that people can't charge their cars. Uh, they just don't like them for some reason. And, and I don't know. I don't know if it's because electric vehicle people are, uh, have, a, have that smugness that South Park depicted. Uh, I, I don't know. But they, there, there really is sort of like a, a resentment about the electric vehicles. I'm fascinated with them. So I'm not a you know, I'm not totally uh, in love with the technology. I know it's got a long way to come, but I'm, I know that it's got a lot more mileage, uh, you know, to go where it becomes really integrated. And it seems to me like it's the most logical, likely uh, outcome for transportation. I do think that we've kept a lot of horse and buggy 
type of, uh, you know, transportation technology alive for the sake of that's our culture and that's how we do things. But I don't know if, the, you know, this is disruptive in, in the way, I mean, it's, all of this is disruptive from Amazon shipping our stuff to us and killing retail to the way we go around. It's, everything is going to change. And I don't know the holdout people, if I'm going to be thanking them for pushing this away, or I'm going to be, you know, like, uh, what, what's your problem? We, we're, we got we to gotta go down this road. This is, this is how this thing is evolving. And I don't know that you're able to stop it even if you could. Uh, but anyway, the, so this is inspiring a lot of talk. And, and even uh, we, we cut the last week's show on, on YouTube, and it was one of the most highly traveled shows, the organic travel, meaning that there was lots of people that were interested in Tesla road trips. And so it got a lot of views and organic uh, you know, visits here just because of the topic. And uh, I'm not one, you know, I guess I am one to beat a dead horse when we come with a topic that you guys want to hear because I want to deliver what you want to know. But uh, I'll I'll try to come up with sort of like a new end. Those who listen to the show up to this point sort of know that I'm, you know, labbing this thing up. I'm trying to get uh, lots of exposure, different areas, and I'm I'm being forthcoming with with the experiences. I'm not going to dress anything up. If it sucks, it sucks. If it's awesome, it's awesome. And let you guys decide. So I've a couple people that I've talked to that had interest and they were on the fence. They, you know, they, they asked me 150 questions about my experiences and I gave them the truthful, uh, you know, the, the rough parts and the, the polished parts. And, you know, a couple of them have purchased Teslas for themselves. So it, it's one of those things where, um, the, the people and, and, and here's the thing, it, it's still so new that how much of it are we putting rose color glasses? We, we like the technology, so we're willing to overlook it. But we go down the road and we wish sort of we didn't, weren't so kind to it because if we were less kind to it, they would have, you know, pushed the development even better. So, you know, some of the early questions that I get when people don't have much of experience. Well, what happens if. You know, the software crashes, like your phone, how it reboots. Well, what about what happens if you that you're driving and your your software crashes and reboots? Well, I actually had that happen to me uh, on 680. I was going home at the end of the day, and uh, the the front screen froze completely. Couldn't see the speedometer. The map was frozen and whatever. And so it timed out for about a minute. I couldn't see anything on there. I was steering was perfectly fine. Brakes, pedal, everything was cool. It, the the car behaved, but I just had no display. And I watched the system completely reboot at 65 miles an hour, or so I think it was 65 miles an hour. I don't know, but I mean that's a real safety concern. If you've got autopilot engaged and the software crashes. And, you know, I was driving the car. I didn't have it on autopilot at the time. But what happens if that? So, again, the technology still has to, you know, get a little bit better before uh, most of us will trust it. And that way, it, you know, right now it's it, it's in that spot where it still requires the driver to pay attention and to be driving. But I'll tell you, I'll put it on autopilot and I'll rest my hand on there and I'll you do my normal distractions, you know, looking at my peripheral, um, you know, phone rings and you see who look down, you, you change the radio station. Well, when you're distracted with those other things, the cameras and the sensors are all paying attention, it's still slowing your, you know, it's slowing your speed down. If the car in front of you starts slowing down, the brakes hit. I mean, I, I'm telling you, it's, it, if anything, it's on the side of a little jumpy where it'll be a mile and a half down the road. Somebody will pull out. My car will come to a 20 mile an hour slowdown. You know, like, you know, a, a grandparent would, would do, they get scared that, you know, my, my car's a, a geriatric so anyway uh 330-729-9977 you can get a call get in on the program uh talk all program long uh last week we did a uh, a gaming tournament and i'm telling you i caught a lot of hell over this uh over what we did as far as uh telling the public about this thing was coming a lot of people mad that we we limited it off the amount of players that were going to be at this one uh for our first one and so after you know it made the news and and uh, and stuff like that. We uh, the the outcome was a lot of people wish I would have told them, and I, I I knew that I could only handle so many people at this first one, and so I limited off. But anyway, the next one we're going to double capacity. Uh, we got a Tech Mobile tournament coming up at the end of this month. So if you're not on Facebook, or if, or if you are on Facebook, head over there to the Youngstown Compute Youngstown Computer LLC. Look at the events, and I've got a Tech Mobile tournament coming up at the end of this month, and then I think the following month is going to be another Super Mario tournament, and then I'm organizing a Minecraft uh, competition. Not a tournament, just a competition. Uh, so all of these are coming together, and I, I have had huge, uh, you know, uh, you know, huge support from the public, especially the gaming public. That's the one I was most concerned about because these are the real deal people, the people that do these tournaments and competitions uh, for a living or on purpose or professionally. And so the criticism that they're going to be able to offer and the, uh, you know, the, the, 
opinions and whatnot are going to be most valuable to me. And I'm so glad that they're all chiming in and helping me get this started and uh, supporting our efforts. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back, take uh, your calls if you have them, 330-729-9977. Or you can text me at 333-157. I'll check those text messages all program long. Uh, You're listening to the Youngstown Computer Show on 570 WKBN. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Youngstown Computer Show. I am Joe Danier, owner of Youngstown Computer, and this is us on Saturday. We can talk about things that are happening in the tech world, uh, talking a little bit about Tesla and artificial intelligence and autopilot and all that kind of stuff. Uh, somebody did chime in during that last rant. Uh, most of the resentment is probably because it's a status symbol and bitter old guys get mad because it doesn't go vroom. And that is probably true. And sometimes I halfway think that, you know, the the little conspiracy theorist voice in my head that we are really integrated to, um, you know, to oil and gas. And because they're such big business that there are a lot of jobs that are leveraged to that industry. And this is a threat to oil and gas, even though electricity comes from natural gas so that it still has that whatever. You're going to have certain people that if if somebody breaks a dependence on something that, you know, provides your uh, you know, your livelihood, it's a threat, and there's just a little bit of, of hatred to it, a little misunderstanding, a little bit of status symbol. So there's probably a bunch of reasons. Uh, but I, I'm wondering, like, even, you know, you have the big trucks that that uh, pipe out uh, black smoke, right? Th- those guys, those, I forget what they call them, but they, you know, the diesel guys that makes lots of noise and whatever. Well, I have a Mustang, and I love that it makes a lot of noise. I didn't buy a Tesla because uh, I'm anti-combustion uh, engine, um, I am pro technology, and and you know it's the same reason I don't have my old Motorola flip phone, right? It's there's an advanced technology. It it's better in certain ways, and it's worse in other ways, and and we just get to experience it. You have people that buy them before they make a whole lot of sense, and those are the people that the te- technology's backs they ride on until they become you know just common pieces of technology that sort of everybody has. It's that early resentment. I always like I said, I always question, and you know you're probably right that there's a little bit of of that uh, uh, the, the the status symbol thing about when you see BMWs, Mercedes, uh, I guess it's grouped into that you know bunch as, as well uh, in certain you know for certain people. Um, so this this happened uh, got got a bunch of messages about it this week about uh, the the spoofing uh, and and scams that are happening and and they've always sort of happened this way but they're they've just been gotten so brave and so good at it. Uh, they, they sound indistinguishable that, that from legitimate, you know, inquiry calls from will be, you know, your bank or the IRS or something like that. They sound so reasonable and they sound so, uh, so such regular, uh, it's very convincing and it's, it's hard to disseminate between the real ones and the fake ones, uh, mostly which because they're, they're using, spoofing where it looks like it's a legitimate phone number uh they, they you know I, I forget what they call it so i think it's called neighbor spoofing or something like that where they have a bank of of phone numbers and uh and what they'll do is they'll use a phone number closest to the one that they're calling so it looks like their neighbor is calling so if you're on a cell phone that starts with you know 509 uh then they'll pick one of their numbers in the database and spoof a 330509 different last four digits and you'd be like oh who's that right so it's harder to distinguish you know the 800 number or the blocked caller or the weird characters you know those aren't working as well as ones that look like there's someone down the street uh so i get a lot of questions about well, how, how are they able to do this well really because of voice over ip the the software controllers on the the outgoing phone systems if you pay enough money to control your own uh, phone system, you can pretty much tell the recipient phone system anything you want uh, as to where the call is originating from. Uh, you, know, you can't, you know, as far as the FCC, they require that it's legitimate. You can't defraud someone based on a spoofed number. But if it's, they don't defraud it, they just don't chase people down and say, hey, you're lying about your phone number type of thing. Okay, so maybe in the future, we need some regulations that prove that the originating number is it. But there's a lot of us that block our calls too. And when you block your call, that's not truthful either. All right. So anyway, we got lots of topics left uh, for the day. If you want to get on the lines, 330-729-9977. You can keep texting me all program long, and I'll check those te- texts with that, uh, along the program. Uh, 333-1570 is the number. You're listening to the Youngstown Computer Show on 570 WKBN. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Lola Metallica for you. This is the Youngstown Computer Show. I am Joe Danier, owner of Youngstown Computer. We're talking about things here in the tech world. We give you this format, place for you to talk, non-intimidating uh, place to bring out maybe some of your vulnerabilities, things you need to know, uh, and whatnot. Uh, we're pretty much, you can get us online, you can get us on the iHeart Radio app, uh, streaming over on Facebook, Terrestrial on 570 WKBN while you're out and about in your car and at home. Um, one little question here. This sort of like parlays on what we talked about earlier with the whole allowing people to use your car when you're at work. Uh, how likely would you be uh, to start letting people use your things when you're not using them? So, uh, you know, you, I, I think uh, Airbnb is a service where if you have a vacation home or not even a vacation home, if you just have a house and you feel like when you, you want people to, that are traveling into town, they want to use your house like a hotel room. Uh, rather than going to a hotel room for X amount of dollars per night, you can have just people staying in there and they do what they want to do. You conform to the rules and 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 whatnot. So th this whole the, – the internet of things is sort of like people asking me about it constantly, like how do I feel about it? Well, you know, your, your washing machine and your refrigerator are talking to the internet, right, to the web. So the capabilities are there that if you wanted to take your resources and allow other people to use them, you could sort of use the technology like Uber and like Tesla's uh, doing where you could put yourself, you know, or, or let's even let's use a better example. Let's just say you had a you had a car, um, a mechanic shop, right? And your lift, you connected your your lift to the uh, to the Internet. Well, when you're not using your lift, another mechanic who doesn't have any shop space can come and rent or lease your your lift. They can pay, you know, $100 per lift or whatever per lift, and they come in, do the lift thing, and then they leave and you get, you know, whatever, you get the money. Um, would you be willing to, to take resources that you own and allow other people to use them so that other people who don't necessarily need to buy that equipment can use it when they need it and then get rid of it when they don't? It's the same theory as you, letting people use your car when you're not using it. There's a lot of unoccupied uh, inventory that you could put out to the world. But I, we, we, our freedoms in this country, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody really likes people messing with our stuff. You know, I, I don't let people in my living room with a drink in their hand, right? So I'm really uh, uh, militant with, with with people around my stuff, and I'm I'm giving them the stink eye if they carry pizza and sit on my couch and start chowing down, right? Uh, so how do you feel if your car went out and serviced someone who was just filthy and drinking coffee in your back seat and whatever? I mean, that would bother the crap out of me. I don't know about about you maybe you're not you don't care as much or maybe there's ways just like in taxis that you can you can make it prepare it so that it's easy to clean and and whatnot and cleaning out your back seat is just part of the the gig how, so the answer the question is uh how much of your life would you be willing to share out with other people including your car and your home and i don't know maybe even some of your relatives who knows anyway uh 330-729-9977 um this, we always we always get back to this whole speed cam thing, right? So another uh, municipality uh, over in Hubbard started this speed cam thing. And does anybody feel at some point that no matter where you go, uh, somebody's going to be tagging you with the speed camera? I mean, it, it, is it just a matter of you know, it, uh, is the overall uh, is the overall uh, push though? Does it make everybody slow down? I can remember when I when I, I first started driving, you know, you were the minority if you were not speeding around going fast and and you only get caught if somebody you know gunned you with laser or radar right and and now literally they can sit on top of a bridge and have a hundred cars how many of you think they tag so maybe 10 percent so they could just sit there all day and cha-ching 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 right and then okay so a little bit of time goes by and everybody gets the hint they're sick of receiving hundred dollar tickets so now maybe five percent cha-ching 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 right eventually does it just you know, it's not worth the speeding because it's so easy to get tagged. And then they, they end up where it may be a fundraising thing in the beginning that everybody just, you know, puts it on. They know what the speed is, right? It's it's nine miles over the speed is what they tell you. If it's 10 miles and over, you're without, you know, you're outside of the uh, the tolerances and, and, and you get a ticket. So everybody's at nine miles an hour and nobody gets tickets anymore. So then what? Does it then the tolerances come down to five miles an hour or is this a game where if they can't get the funding out of it, that they're going to keep making it more strict so that they keep getting the funding out of it? Uh, I, I don't know. This, it, it seems like a really foolish game. Uh, but if in the end, if, if these if these mayors and, and chief police chiefs believe that it makes things safer, 
then I'll complain about it because I, I think it's just it's it's harvesting from the people who should not be harvested from. Right. It's taking uh, these tickets are not cheap. And, and and if somebody who has enough doesn't have enough money to, to to pay their rent at the end of the month gets three of these tickets. I mean, w- what about them? There's there's no reprieve. It's really hurting people that are on the the lowest lower end. So yeah, maybe you say that maybe they shouldn't speed, they wouldn't get hit, but it doesn't change the deal that they're the consequences of getting making everybody safer is that you hurt a lot of people. So the benefit is that you get slower traffic, and 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 the risk is that you destroy some lives. I mean, it hardly seems worth it. So I, I kind of just keep complaining for those people who are getting really hurt. Maybe there were a lot better ways to slow down traffic than you know hurting with people because that's a heavy hammer they're hitting people with. Uh, and I no, I'm not I'm not saying this because I got any tickets. I haven't got one since uh, you know maybe last year. Uh, and and I. To 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 kind of go off what I heard Beatrice talking about the other day, uh, and they're 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 suggesting that you just pay these things and uh, because they're going to be could be even though they don't go off your record and they don't get reported to credit bureaus, they could be eventually uh, gone into collection. And then when when collection items get to the point where uh, they don't really hold the original debtor, then they don't really care if it where it came from. It's just a debt, and then that collection could be just a debt and it could hit your your credit well i i'm i'm a principled guy i'm not going to pay these things and they send me you know there's this one from howland uh that uh that that i got in december and they add 20 dollar fee to it every month right and uh and i'm not paying it i decided i'm not going to pay any more of them so it comes in and i see they added 20 more dollars i think it's like 180 dollars now for the ticket and they said they're going to give me 40 more days and then they're going to charge it off to a collection agency uh, see i don't much care right so go for it if you feel like using that hammer the money hammer and then the threat of ruining my credit and and all that go ahead if that, if that's what that if that's the relationship that the police want to have with the public as is, is the threats and and holding hostage and and being mean so be it that's their consequence but i i'm a i'm a principal guy and i'm going to lay off the whole paying these things i haven't generated any more so it's not hurting me but I, i'm going to watch that one and see what ends up happening i'm going to use myself as an experiment let it go to collections see if it reports and then i'll bring that back to the table if it doesn't then hey i'm, I'm going to suggest that you know nobody give these people a reason to keep doing this um i i, I think it's I, I don't know i think it's just awful it's the fleecing. It's the, I call them the bridge pirates. Uh, Fred Wilk is real good about uh, on me on this crusade to to uh, humiliate them and and make them feel guilty and really paint them in the worst light possible. So they stop it. They 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 cut it out because uh, I, I don't know. And like I said, if 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 in the end the streets get safer, then okay, great. But at what cost? I mean, what did you do to the people who you're supposed to be winning back? They you know you see these cops playing basketball and catch baseball on the side of the road with with some kids and then you know you're tagging their parents for a couple hundred bucks then they have trouble feeding them and come on anyway 330-729-9977 um i'm going to harp on one more thing okay and then I, I promise after this one i won't do any more harping i won't this I, i'm on, while i'm on negative avenue might as well stay there uh so the the retail game we still we still have to talk about this on on a regular basis because every news article every time i do show prep I look into the retail outlets that that are continually shutting down. They're continually uh, downsizing. Uh, they're they're just not able to compete with the convenience of having goods delivered directly to you. It is getting great for the consumer and terrible for providers. We're allowing all of this power to be consolidated with a couple of companies, and I have to tell you about it regularly because I, that scares the crap out of me. Uh, that we're allowing this to happen in that super slow motion. So, you know, whenever we're we're able to um, uh, claw some of that back, when we support, you know, I'm, I'm not big, you know, I don't care if, you know, something happens to the chains, but at least we can support local, local businesses and uh, and spend our money with those people if we can possibly help it. Because I think that's the only thing that counters this, that we, we keep local guys doing the stuff because local guys can do a really good job at servicing the public. And then, you know, retail chains, I don't think they do as good as what you can get from, you know, the, con- the, the consolidated ones like Amazon's, but the local guys can. And I'm more likely when it means something, when there's meaningful work to be done, I'm going to get it from someone I trust who's a professional. That's the cool thing about, uh, you know, 570 and, and the people that they bring on. These are local professionals from your area. These are the people that are doing this stuff. So whether it's, uh, you know, Herb or Dr. Fitko or John Arnold or all of these professionals, if you want to spend money local, that's how you spend them with, with, with these guys. 
And so, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm still going to watch this in slow motion while we continue to give that power. I'm going to keep making warnings. But if you can make a conscious choice to spend your money with someone uh, in your local markets, uh, and it, it, it ends up being a little bit cliche when we say that, but it, it's truly important. we got to show our support for these people so they continue uh, to, to know that they're, it's warranted. I will hang out all day. I will hang out and say, you know, when times get tough, when money gets lean, if I know that I have the community support and they really want local people to be providing their services, I will see through the the, the toughest times and because and, and, I know they're going to support me on the other side. But if the marketplace is fickle where we just want the lowest dollar and we don't care who serves it, then, you know, there, there's some people that I'm going to say, hey, you might as well buy out now because the public, they're not buying what you're selling and uh, so don't put yourself, don't waste every dime that you've ever worked for to stay alive when it's so, you know, the, the end result is that everybody's going to bail on what you're selling. So I figured I'd bring that up regularly and, uh, and just keep the warning fresh in your mind that if we, if we make those decisions, that's the end result. You drive down 224 and you can't buy stuff, right? It's not available because, you, you know, these big retailers, they had lots of inventory because you bought most of your stuff in their store. And then that inventory erodes when you start buying some of it elsewhere, and then they can't even afford to sell the stuff that you will buy because just the overhead of selling stuff local. So, all right, 330-729-9977. We're going to go to David. David, you're on the Youngstown Computer Show. How can I help you? Hi, how you doing? Good. I unfortunately don't get to listen often enough, and I've got two quick things. One is um, you talk – it sounds like in a previous show a lot about the Tesla. I'm fascinated. Uh, and obviously, I don't want you to go over it all now. But is it saved like on a podcast? Oh yeah, yeah. If you we have it both on uh, on Facebook and YouTube, we have all of our shows as well as if you go to five seventy wkbn dot com, uh, all the Youngstown Computer Shows are podcasted there. Great. So I'll get on and and uh, listen to it because I'm fascinated by what you had to say on that. The the second thing is about the speed camps. Yeah. And <laughs> my question slash problem is this. <laughs> You know, I, I live out in a rural area, you know, and I have a lot of four-way stop signs, and I've got a lot of red lights. I leave for work like at 4.30 in the morning, but I stop at stop signs because that's what the law is. And I don't know that I have the power to say, okay, some of the laws I believe in I'll obey, and some of the laws I won't obey. If everybody does that, we've got anarchy. Amen. So the bottom line with the speeding cameras just don't bloody speed. You know, if you make the choice to speed, you make the choice to speed. And, you know, I mean, you have to admit, if you get a ticket, if you're over the speed limit, you have broken the law. So, I mean, in this society, we pay people to elected officials to sit down and come with ideas about speed limits and every type of law. And I might not agree with all of them, but that's the system. And I just don't have the right to pick and choose what laws I like and what laws I don't like. So bottom line is, you don't speed, you won't get the ticket. All right, David. Can't disagree with you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care. And, and it, it, my, my, my only objection, I can't, nobody can disagree with David, which is David, David just said. It is the law, which is the law, which is the law, right? But here's the thing. If you, if you take a law where you tolerated it yesterday— and then today you start imposing a bunch of stuff. You already know that people are speeding, right? So all you're doing is harvesting. So, it, and like I said, if it, if it overall ends up making more people follow the law, then that's great. The problem is with our government and our municipalities and our state, all of these people, right, they've made so many laws where you can't breathe without breaking a law. So if I, I got a better idea, let's just make laws so strict. So the, 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 let's make our laws that it applies to everyone. There's no exception of subjectivity. And let's make only laws where you can uniformly call across the board. You, you speed, you get busted, your car relays that you just sped, no matter who you are. I don't care if you're a cop or an ambulance driver or a school bus driver. Everybody who speeds, your, your car tells on you and a, tr a, a ticket shows up uniformly across the board. People who follow laws, we're, we're okay with following laws as long as we're following the law and we see someone who's not and they're not busted, right? That's the injustice that we, we get. So we've allowed governments to create all these laws that make all of us feel like, uh, you know, all the time that we're, we're lawbreakers. And, and so they have to almost ignore half the people who are lawbreakers or else everybody be in freaking jail. And so uh, that's the only reason I would disagree with you, David, because they weren't uh, policing. They weren't you know, strictly applying the law. And all of a sudden they're like, 
Here we go. Gotcha. We got you. We're going to start applying the law right now. Just this one. Just this law. Not all these over here, right? Because I see little old ladies driving in the left-hand lane when you're not supposed to be able to do that. And guess what they're not doing? They're not pulling little old ladies. So if we're going to follow that law but not that law, then, yeah, that's a little unfair to everybody else. Uh, I tell you, that when, when I first started learning to drive, my, my grandma uh, was, was – we would drive her a little Oldsmobile around. She was teaching me how to go around, and, and uh, we pulled up to a stop sign. And uh, there was nobody around. I mean, this was either, I forget, really early in the morning or really late at night. And there was nobody around. And I stopped at the stop sign. And she said, why are you stopping? And I said, there's a stop sign. And she said, well, who are you, who are you signaling or who are you waiting for? There's nobody around. So she told me that you only stop at a stop sign when there's another person that, uh, that you'd be yielding to. There was there first. She said, you don't have to do that if there's nobody around. So anyway. All right, 330-729-9977 is the phone number. Uh, I, if you, and I wanted to add this to the last topic that we had. Uh, if you want to sign up for the Tech Mobile, this is an 8-bit, the old version, the, uh, the vintage NES uh, gaming system. We're doing a Tech Mobile tournament. Okay, and this is kind of cool how I'm doing this. Um, if you haven't played, it's, it's, I, I played on, on, on Thursday. And it, it brought back so many memories of this game. But anyway, what we're doing is we're allowing people who enter this tournament, uh, you get to pick four of the teams, and you're only allowed to use one of those teams per round because there's obviously stronger teams in the game than other teams. So you can't just pick the strongest team and then wipe everybody out because everybody's just going to pick the same one. So you can only use a team in once per, per game. So you can either have a weaker team and try to win the early rounds so that you could use the stronger team later, or you could use you know half and half, or you could use the middle teams to, to start off. But it's, it's an interesting way to see how this game is played. So if you go to Eventbrite, look up the uh, Tech Mobile tournament and get signed up. Tickets are $11. I believe it's the 27th is the next uh, is the next tournament. So I hope you'll go over to Eventbrite or Facebook and uh, get signed up for that event. Uh, Andy, I see you out there. We're going to come back and take your call when we we back for this break. You're listening to the Youngstown Computer Show on 570 WKBN. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the Youngstown Computer Show. And uh, last last segment, I said I was going wasn't going to complain anymore. Too bad. I'm going to complain the whole show long. We got a lot of tons of uh, complainable material, so I'm going to keep going with it. Uh, some text messages that came in over the last segment. Um, also, the risk of electric vehicles being compromised via security exploits. Your thoughts? Uh, very important because they uh, they put a challenge out to hackers that they were going to give three hundred thousand dollars away for a hacker that could break into the the. Uh, the Model 3 Tesla. And guess what happened? It took about four months, and a hacker won the prize money because they were successfully able to hack. So as long as they keep that prize money, they keep people trying, and they keep fixing it as people keep trying it, it'll get better. And But it, there's when it comes to software, when it comes to hardware, we know that everybody can be tricked. The next generation, like right now they're doing scams to get your money and, and to make you buy software and trick you into thinking you have a virus. The next set of scams are going to be in your car. You know, the ransoms that they're going to hold for people that are in their car saying, hey, I'm going to lock the doors right now, and I'm going to slowly creep you so that you, you're going to go off this cliff. Better better wire me $100, right? Or I'm going to kill you in your car. I have control of your car. You're dead meat, right? Would you do it? Of course you would. But is that the next thing? How? And, and that's what I'm saying. Like most of this fight is going to be against regulators that they're going to have to be convinced that they've thought of everything everything and if er this early on in the game before there has been any exploits that they're interested in making sure they combat all of the the you know the involved exploits because I, I mean what it's really going to come down to is that uh, a user is going to have a sucky password and somebody's going to install the application somebody's going to be able to have the summon thing on their phone and they're going to hold you hostage right so how are they going to plan against that so i'm i'm you know, with you here, that uh, it's still very exploitable, and uh, and so they've got a lot of, you know, so they've got a lot of stuff to to plan for. All right, next text message is, oh, they, yeah, this is this is a good deal. Um, when you're when you have your autonomous vehicles that are going around and they start, you know, tagging people for, uh, you know, for these speed cameras, how effective is that going to be? Where whoever you know, the, the person driving or the autonomous stuff driving. I mean, is that going to play into this whole thing? Uh, and they mentioned in this text message is, let's, ma let's make this zero aggravations. Let's have, uh, oh, no, that was, that was on anyway. Well, let me add to this anyway. So it, it, I, I always thought that I would be a little bit more tolerant of these speed camera things 
if they uh, if they could get you the infraction faster. So if let's just say over in uh, 80, they're they're hitting that bridge pretty hard. Uh, if you get the notification that you got hit within like an hour, you're like, oh, you know what? They must be hitting that. I'll slow down. But what if you haven't got the notice that you got hit and then you just, you know, drive like you normally do and you get seven more within the same period of time before you realize it's even happening, right? There was nothing to, to, to correct it. There was nothing to make you change your behaviors, but yet they're kept hitting you within that period of time, especially if people go by the same places every work and they drive the same speed every day to work and, you know, those behaviors, it's pretty predictable that that kind of stuff happens. So let's make it part of a rule that uh, they, they have a timeline to get you the infraction or else it's no go. So let's make it really difficult, too, to get you that stuff. So if they pull you over and write you a ticket, you know within 30 seconds if you've been hammered. Well, if they get you by camera, let's give them a day. Let's give them two days to, to you know, FedEx, MoneyGram, that notification to you that you got it so that you can make changes in tomorrow's commute. I don't know. Maybe it's unfair. I don't know. Anyway, 330-729-9977. We got some more text messages, and I'll keep complaining about just about anything you put in front of me. Uh, you can also text me here at 333-1570. You're listening to the Youngstown Computer Show on 570 WKBN. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Youngstown Computer Show. I am Joe Danier, owner of Youngstown Computer, and this is your your Saturday show. We talk about things that are important and interesting to you. Also, Talk about things that are important and interesting to myself. We talk about things that are happening in tech, give you some insights. Uh, and you could be a little bit, you know, we sort of learn from one another. So we can throw uh, insights out there. And people who have hung around the show long enough, uh, you start out as a neophyte where you just don't know what you're doing. And then just because you listen to the language and you can participate and everybody gets a little bit, uh, you know, they get a little bit smarter every time that you're, you're around this. It's sort of like osmosis where you start to just absorb uh, the language and, and – um, I try to keep everything so that it is simplified and I don't use acronyms so that I'm talking over your head. I try to make and explain as many things as I can so that you, you can get a little bit better, you know, every week uh, that you hear this program. So I want to welcome everybody who's joined us uh, for this program, who's listened for a long time. I want to also, you know, uh, people who are brand new, thank you for joining into the show. Uh, those of you on Facebook, uh, watching over there, Dr. Sevilla from Salem Family Practice, uh, says, loves the show. Thank you for listening, Dr. Mike. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, you see, so get on the program. You can text me here. So if you're driving along, don't want to call, you can, uh, well, don't text while you're driving. That's pretty, pretty dumb. But 330-333-1570 is the number if you want to text me, or you can call at 330-729-9977 and uh, talk about things. Uh, I, I, don't, I rarely get political since we, since we have this whole um, Tim Ryan thing happening, uh, probably right now as we speak. Uh, you know, it, it's really tough because we, you know, we don't get political here, but the information, um, you know, the information age and the methods of which we consume uh, news and whatnot, this is this is the frontier that we are fighting over. This is the landscape. And, you know, political has become sort of the biggest team sport, uh, you know, of this of this decade, at least, where there's a lot of not, you know, there's a, a lot of polarity where. Um, that, that you don't see eye to eye with people who disagree with you on these things. And, and I, I'm going to say it used to be, but I don't know if it ever was this way, but at least in my my brain, it, it feels like it was a little bit where people of differing opinions could sit down and, you know, be different and still talk about things. But it seems like everybody is, you know, super offended to get in the same room with somebody where the other side becomes instantly stupid if they're different than you. And, you know, ridiculed and mocked and, and, and whatnot. So the decorum, I mean, just the way of dealing with people who disagree, you want the other person to be wrong, right? So you kind of take chunks out of their, uh, you know, their intelligence or whatever. And I, I don't know, I, I just think that there can be lots of different, different standpoints, but, uh, standpoints uh, but when we put people in those boxes and we make people right or wrong, it, it limits the amount of conversation that happens. So what the brilliant thing about the, the web and conversations is we can just keep hashing it out and it gets absurd to a point that everybody says, you know what? Yeah, it got absurd. And then we can get back to normalcy. Well, there's a there's a lot of stuff in tech where uh, they are they're they're creating uh, a, a normalcy, like a, a censored version, a whitewashed version of the way that we speak and talk and, and whatnot. So, you know, it used to be that if, if there were idiots amongst you that you wanted to give them the microphone, because when an idiot talks, they out themselves. And then the people who are listening don't feel like, 
uh, listening to them anymore, right? It's the information. But in today's world, if someone's an idiot's talking, we want to take the microphone away from them so that other people aren't accidentally exposed to the things that are coming out of their mouth, right? And and so in America here, we're, we're, we used to have tougher skin. We used to be able to put up with differing opinions. We were a little bit you know, harder than we are right now. And this softness that we have is and saying, you know, if someone goes on the radio and says something that makes you mad, you want justice, you want them to be shut down, you want their lives ruined and whatever. And I always picture the uh, the the South Park episode where everybody picks up pitchforks and, and torches and go rabble, 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 you know, they always want to destroy people. That's what I picture the public now, so soft and so ready to just jump on someone uh, for being different than them. Uh, and I'm not even saying to the point where you have to take someone who differs with you and try to have an understanding for their ideas. You don't owe them an understanding for their ideas. The, pro- the thing is that they just get to be different with you, and you got no say in whether or not they feel differently about you. It's it, the, the marketplace either helps or hurts that, that deal. So if, if we have principles, right, all of us have principles that we buy into. We, we know that it's probably bad if we kill one another. Why? Because if we got killed, we would probably not like it. And so killing people is probably one of those things where let's try to— uh, dissuade people from killing people, stealing from people, telling lies for people, all that kind of stuff. That's stuff we can all agree that, hey, we don't want it to be done with us, so let's make that a principle and let's not have it be done. Um, but it seems like in, you know, I see this at a football at a football game where and it's your team that does it, okay? So let's just say uh, a, a late hit, right? If, if your team hit does the late hit, you cheer, like, ha, we got away with that one. But if the other team has a late hit, it's like, boo, that guy needs to be taken out and shot, Right. And so we're instead of being on the principle that we are on, we're not on the principle. We're on on the team. So if it's our team, then we can get away with a lot of stuff, and we got justifications why it's different because it's ours. And so that was sort of like what, what the last topic. When if they just took the laws that we had and put them universal across, no exceptions, then they'd have to tone down the law and be more accommodating. But we got this dance where they're going to tolerate some people, so they got to make the law strict, and then it ends up focusing on maybe people that you know people get caught in that whole game. You know, so we'll use car dealership analogy. So you go to the car dealership and you know what you want to pay and you know what they want to charge, right? The more they charge, the more money they make, the less you pay, the more money, more car you can afford. So you play this little dance. Well, what's easier than the dance? Well, how about I just say, hey, Mr. Car Dealer, I have exactly this much money in the bank. Can you just find me a car? And the car dealer says, hey, I'm just going to sell you what you asked for. That'd be an easy part of the game. But as long as there's this dance between these variables, there's going to be people that get really screwed. There's going to be people that really get a benefit. And then there's going to be that middle people who are in, you know, just, just don't care. So the reason I bring this up is because we're, you know, when, when Facebook and Twitter and Amazon and, and, and people that don't, we don't directly control, we don't elect them. If they de- decide to make bad choices, we have no say. We're just stuck with it. Right. So when they start censoring, like right now, you might agree with them. Hey, if somebody goes on the uh, the the air and starts, you know, using the N word or or something that is really meaningful to you, we're going to kick them off. We're going to make it so that if anybody does hate speech on there, yeah, get them off the radio. But what happens one day when you criticize uh, uh, somebody that of your choosing and all of a sudden you're lumped in there with hate speech and you're looking around saying, well, wait, that's not fair. Why, why do they get to tell me that I can't talk? So I'm, I'm one of those people who we have freedoms as long as we have the responsibility and deserve them. The minute that we don't deserve them anymore, then they all kind of go away. They get chopped up and they go, they go away. So in, in the tech field, I want it to be, I know I, I watch message boards on the, the dark web. Right. And compare them to things you see on Facebook that are a little bit more sanitized on Facebook versus the stuff that's on Twitter. You've always wandered into a, 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 an environment that is completely deregulated and free of rules versus ones that are really strict rules and ones that are the Wild West. Right. Which ones do you like to participate in? Well, I'll tell you this, that if it's if it's cleaned up and, and scammers are kept away and the language is a little bit better and there's not pornography on the screen, it's a little bit better for me to be able to enjoy the environment. So I, in that version of me, I'm going to say, well, yeah, I value somebody making decisions that cleans it up. But what happens when they start cleaning up things that they don't want you to see and you never know that you didn't see it. But then when you find out that they didn't say so, let's just say somebody had a really good idea about um uh, what's that? Uh, cold fusion, right? Somebody came up with cold fusion, but somebody at Facebook or somebody at Twitter decided that that was speech that was going to be too disruptive and carry, you know, it was going to kill too many jobs and the oil companies would, would be upset about it. So they came up with cold fusion. They're like, you know what? We're not going to let anybody see that. 
we, we gave them the power to let some people be blocked. Okay. And it's just a matter of time. If they have that power to block speech that they can pick and choose, there's no, nothing above them. There's no whistleblower. There's no board. There's no uh, elections that if they decide to do that, they got free reign to do it. And, and, you know, it was, it was the political cycle a couple years ago where, you know, the government used the IRS to target uh, 401c3s, right? These were conservative groups that were targeted by the IRS. And, and so when, when I see us going down this channel where Twitter gets all to ultimately decide who gets to be seen, that scares the crap out of me because I don't trust anybody. I don't trust anybody, honestly, because no, everybody has shown that they don't deserve the trust. So you have to earn that trust. So I'll trust you as long as you haven't made a mistake and you haven't shown me that you, you can't be trusted. But that's only you know, I'm still going to have cynical eyes when I'm looking at you. I trust you for now because you have good reason not, not to. But you don't get it by default. You have to earn that stuff. And I'm telling you, if you give someone that power there, it's only a matter of time before a dis- different person gets in the power seat before they, they change it up and make you wish that you could do something. And by that point, it's completely too late. Uh, so we have the the big three that that had all kind of uh, made the press a whole bunch about uh, the, uh, especially Twitter. And and I'll tell you, I mean, th- this station has a lot of conservative bent, a lot of the commentators, uh, be it Rush and Hannity and the afternoon guys. Uh, and and so uh, in tech, it's pretty much the opposite, where everybody has the uh, the liberal bent, right? So you have these opposing things. I want my internet to be free of bias and I want my news to be free of bias and I want my conversations to be free of bias. I only go get bias when I want it. I don't want everything to be sterilized, changed, flavored, messed with. I want it to be authentic and truthful, right? Like, could, could we just get to the point where we know what the difference is between adding our opinion to something and what the truth really is? It's almost like if you're an expert, you're allowed to put your opinion on something and make it more factual than just the data. So it's happening in environmentalism and technology and, and every industry, it, it, there's, there's not any that are, are free from those biases. So it's hard to operate as, a, as an objective observer when, when you don't know if the information you were fed has some kind of, you know, uh, impurity that was added in there by someone who felt like they had great intentions when they put that impurity. But if they can do it, what about the people that aren't smart or don't have good intentions? If they have the ability to pepper your information with, an, with impurity, I mean, that's a... It's a dangerous thing. I don't want to live in that world, but that's where we are. And and that's why you hear me complain about it, because uh, it's it's kind of already too late. And, and, but, you know, if, if you know, I, I don't want Fox News and I don't want CNNs. I don't I don't want any of them. It, it, as far as I'm concerned, I just want truthful stuff. And so there you go. There's my my news rant for the tech industry. Um, I think it's really wrong. And uh, and if if tomorrow and here's the here's the other way that this goes tomorrow, there'll be a conservative Twitter that comes out and and people will be happy about that. Well, that's just a pendulum in the other direction. That doesn't actually solve it. I'm going to sit here and keep saying, Hey, how about some truth? Uh, truth would be nice here. And all I'd be offered is the, they say, Oh, Hey, what team are you on? Let me give you a flavor for your team. And then you'll stop saying truth. Right. Anyway, I, I don't know how we got there on this tech show, but that was my little rant about that. Uh, speaking of the tech field, I want to give you the plan. I, I, I released this on, on uh, Facebook yesterday on Facebook live. Uh, did a little couple minute uh, release. I, I, and next year, I'm going to be doing a technology expo in Youngstown. And it's going to be a pretty big venue. Uh, I haven't decided whether or not it's going to be a big place like the Cavelli Center or it's going to be uh, like the Expo Center over in Girard. Uh, basically, I'm going to set up tables and I'm going to invite every every company that is loosely connected with technology. If you do something with tech, if it's something that the, the public is going to look at and it and, and it's a... You know, tech, you know, it's a tech connected company, 3D printing companies and copier companies and Internet providers and web hosting and robotics and automation. Any of those people are going to count. I'm going to invite everybody who has a, an in to, uh, to tech and invite them to the tech expo. And at the same time, I'm also going to invite and have a gaming tournament. And it's really hard to get the the generation, you know, from 30 years and younger to come out in public and to inter- interact with that part of society. So I feel like if I can get that group out with parents out and with some business out that, you know, this venue would would pretty much, 
you know, you, you kind of need that draw, right? You kind of need to get people out of the house for a purpose. And I don't think if I hold a tech expo, it's going to draw the public out as much as if I give, you know, that group a, a reason to come out to compete against the tournament. And while you're out there, you can see all of this great stuff that Youngstown has to offer. Because now this, we get to demonstrate what we do really well. And I guarantee that it's going to be more impressive than you give us credit for. I bet you there are a lot of companies that you don't even know are in the area that are, and you're going to see them for the first time at the tech expo. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, one of my one, one of my customers, uh, Centricity, they do manufacturing automation. They make robots that makes that, that manufacture goods, right? I didn't know that they were here until I started dealing with them. So why are these little, uh, you know, best kept secrets kept secret so long? Well, because they're not given a reason to come out and interface with the public. So I'm going to invite the public down to meet these people and show off what they do, and it will be a spectacle where it was something that we can all be proud of because our area does a lot more than you ever know. That it does. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Um, so we're gonna we're doing these tournaments down at my office and and probably to expand into bigger venues as sort of a practice leading up to that. Uh, so as soon as I know that I could draw a crowd out for these tournaments and we get respected in that gaming community for being able to hold these things, then we're going to ramp it up pretty quick. Pick a date for the Tech Expo. Uh, so be all, all of you business owners that are there, that are uh, connected to the Tech Expo, be expecting or tech industry, be expecting to get an invitation uh, to get a table at the Tech Expo to show off what it is. And I want it to be really demonstration heavy. I don't want it just to be a sales thing I want it really to be show offs. I want I want lots of stuff for people to look and see and touch and get to know what it is that we do. So do me that favor that uh, you'll 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 support the expo and uh, and that you'll make sure that you you interface with the community the best example that you could possibly come up with. All right, we're going to take a break. Scott, I see you out there. We'll come and take your call as soon as we get back. Uh, you can also text me 330-729-9977 or text me at 333-1570. You're listening to the Youngstown Computer Show on 570 WKBN. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Youngstown Computer Show. I am Joe Danier, owner of Youngstown Computer. This is your Saturday show where we get to talk about things that are happening in tech. Uh, 330-729-9977 is the phone number. Let's go to Scott real quick. Scott, you're on the Youngstown Computer Show. How can I help you? Hey, Joe. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I just want to run something by you because I listen to you every week and listen to your tech. I have a uh, social online friend down in Australia that's into tech, and he put me on the uh, last week to an app for my iPhone called 1.1.1.1. See if you've heard of it. It creates a drone virtual private network on your phone. I just want to know if it's It seems like it's working. It, it, does, uh, it says VPN next to my signal box and next to my LTE or um, 4G, whatever I happen to be on. Have you ever heard of that app before? I have not. And and really what it comes down to is you have to be able to trust the VPN provider because they you know, they, they can see the traffic on both sides of the tunnel, so you have to make sure that you know who they are and that they're reputable enough. Um, so they've probably got a tunnel up, you just gotta be able to trust them. Okay. So how do you, you kinda look who who it's made by in the app folder and then kind of research it online? Or exactly. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't deal with a foreign source because they do, just have far fewer regulations than we do here. I'd try to get a, an American source and kind of trace it back to make sure that it's it's sort of bound to a company that's bigger than just it. Um, you know, I usually gotcha. start with sort of national advertisers. The people who are hitting the advertising circuit pretty big. Uh, start from there um, and then, you know, research it down that way. Gotcha. Okay, terrific. Thank you. You're welcome. And for the Tech Expo, I'm, I'm trying to create um, a podcasting network out in the area. Is that something that's tech-related I might want to think about? Heck yeah. At your Tech Expo? A- absolutely. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, All Scott. Right, buddy, thanks. Well, enjoy listening every week. All right. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate you being out there. And so, yeah, in, in service providers as well. I mean, it, it's important that we, you know, um, I, I build a studio downtown, and my job with the studio is to invite people to get them some exposure to that so that they can go off and do that kind of stuff, right? So there maybe someone uh, needs to market themselves where they can do so, sort of what I do, get in front of a microphone and just talk about what they do, have people get comfortable with who they are and want to do business with them. That is a great way to interface with the public, especially when it's multimedia heavy. So if you do podcasting and it's a way to introduce information to the public, that is absolutely a, a great uh, lead in. So we're going to have tons of table space and we're going to have the tons availability to make your demonstration. And I'm just asking that it's a really good demonstration that when people walk up to their table, they can get a real feel for what it is that we do here in Youngstown, because it's going to impress the next generation. They're going to make decisions where they're going to school, where they want to get jobs and where they want to live their life. They want to be in an area 
that is so heavy with the stuff that they want to do for a living. So I'm sure we're going to have some hardware providers and maybe some people in the gaming community. Because a lot of these kids, I'm telling you, uh, they, they want to, you know, they play, they spend a lot of their, their time uh, playing these games. And I have a lot more respect for game players than I did even six months ago. Like I would have probably just mocked and ridiculed that that generation and, and that, those kind of behaviors before because I didn't have a real good understanding of it. I think that there isn't a, you know, a professional version of that where a, a kid can put time and energy and practice into something and then go make a decent living being a gamer. I don't know. And, and so, you know, this part of our, our venture here is to see if we can do that. There's a lot of skilled players that it, it's and, and really the reality is that I, I separated athletics and game playing has made them two different things. They're equally as absurd as far as uh, making a profession. Out of them. But if, if somebody can make a decent living curling, right, the, that stupid sweeper game with the stone. I'm sorry, curlers. I don't mean to offend you. But if somebody could do that as a profession, what's to stop them from having professional, you know, Call of Duty uh, competitions in Minecraft. If somebody can make a living doing something that they love, then shouldn't we all try to, you know, support that? And But you as a parent, how many, if your kid would come up to you and say, you know what, I'm going to be a professional gamer. How many of you would say, wow, that is amazing. Get You better get to practicing. Well, may, maybe if we took a little bit and had a little bit more respect for the, the industry and knew a little bit more about it, we could have, we could react to that a little bit better. All right, we'll come back, take some more of your calls, 330-729-9977, or you can text me at 333-1570. You're listening to the Youngstown Computer Show on 570 WKBN. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the Youngstown Computer Show. I am Joe Danier, owner of Youngstown Computer. We talk about things that are happening in tech, hear me rant from time to time, and uh, talk about what's important to you, maybe uh, help you out with some problems that you might have. Uh, we'll take calls all show long, so feel free, 330-729-9977. Uh, we have people who text all program long at 333-1570. So if you're out and about and don't need, can't really call, but send me a message, let me know you're out there listening. Uh, again, that's 333-1570. Uh, let's go next to Irvin. Irvin, you're in on the Youngstown Computer Show. How can I help you? Hey, uh, Joe, this is Irvin. Hey, um, uh, I wanted to mention to you or ask you about this uh satellite that they're supposed to be putting up. I hear you mention the car guy. Uh, this, you know, is supposed to be a hundred times better than Hubble. They were supposed to be putting it up this year. And uh, I, I can't get anything on it because my one switch in, in this room here is off. But, uh, but I I haven't heard anything in a week or two. They they were supposed to put it up in 2018. But they, I, you know what I'm talking about? Do you know which one? I, I'd read a lot of them, and they've got a lot of those projects going on. Do you know which one you're looking for? Uh, the, the one the one I'm looking for is the one that's supposed to go up 800 and some thousand miles to a million miles. And they got all this computer gadget on it to put the Freon on to keep it. It's supposed to be facing the sun or something like that. I'm, I'm surprised nobody's heard about this. Well, I'm in, I, 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 I love Euro, that kind Euro, of stuff. I don't know, someplace. There's about 20 nations combined. I think the United States got $8 billion in the whole thing. Yeah, I think I read that at the beginning of the year. I'm going to have to look it up and see how that's coming along and see if I can get some details for you. So maybe next week I'll bring that up and, and, and bring up the speed as much as I can. Okay, well, I just hadn't heard any. I thought, sure, that would be a computerized thing because they got Absolutely. a lot of computerized stuff. They got the gold shields on it to reflect the sun away, and they're gonna, they say they're going to be able to look back and see uh, – Almost three thousand years of what the sun wow. and the uh, planets and how they collided and everything. I mean, that's just a, a short thing about it. Yeah, that's... that was that was basically what I wanted. I uh, said I'll give you a call. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Irvin. Appreciate you being out there. Okay. All right. Take Thank care. You. And and you know that kind of stuff. I love I, I love space exploration. I love physics. I love time. I love you know all that kind of stuff. And so when he mentioned that, it, it, you know, when you when you have these uh, the, these telescopes, they could can just pull in stuff from so far away. You're literally able to look back in time like that's literally looking back in time, something that's traveled 300, you know, billion light years. And it gets to your telescope and you're able to see that data. That stuff is awesome. But to, I know what he's talking about. Um, and, and I forget the details of it, but I remember that it was it was. Uh, it started, I want to say at the beginning of the year, January or February, it started to receive data, and that's last I heard. Um, and then a couple weeks ago, uh, that we had the rover that went down 
uh, after, I don't know, 30 years or however many years of service. J say that again, Dave. James James Webb Space Telescope. I'm going to look that up um, and and bring you guys up to speak because again, that's that's a good part of this show too because we we do delve into the sciences behind uh, these these technologies. So Irvin, we'll keep you in mind. Uh, text messages came in. The inability to level the playing field online as to what reaches the highest visibility audience is why there's such a huge division, especially in the U.S. Those who know how to most readily disseminate an idea or opinion <clears throat> or news will affect uh, will affect thoughts, yeah, thoughts and quickest, and so will antagonize the other side. Sadly, there just isn't something the fairness doctrine could be utilized online. Um, yeah, and and honestly, news is a business. So if if you say, come on, I mean, we're, we're, people are not great naturally, right? If we're not following principles, we're really kind of animalistic. We're driving along, we see a wreck, right? We look at the wreck, right? And so if it's something, if flashing things and devastation and drama take our attention, well, if there's a news station that's giving you news and they can get you to look at them by dressing it up and making it flashy and dramatic, they do, right? So half of the news business goes away because if you just gave me truth and news, it would be boring and you wouldn't watch, all right? So what do you expect a business that is news to do? Give you a product that nobody's going to watch or, you know, try to outdo the other one. A good example of that is if, when you, if you go to Las Vegas the first time, uh, it's kind of confusing, right? Because you're, you should watch TV and a car dealer came on the first time that I was there and literally was wearing like the most gaudy, uh, bright clothing. And it was, he was literally screaming into the camera. And it, it threw me off a little bit because here you see, you know, respectable people and telling you about the deals they have and they don't have to get absurd. Well, in Las Vegas, the flashier everything gets, the more that you, you, you blend into the background if you're not flashy. So it sort of, I call it the Britney Spears effect from that day, where it's constantly trying to outdo the previous version of yourself or the previous version of other people. And by the time you, you stop, everything is so loud and absurd that, you know, nobody can, uh, no, nobody can, can deal with it. So, you know, the, the, the news thing is, I mean, all right, guys, come on. If the news comes on and every 10 seconds they get breaking news, I just did air quotes, breaking news. Is it really breaking news? Or every time they ring a bell and say breaking news, do you pay attention? Uh, breaking news, they pay attention. Problem is your tolerances go up and then you are least likely to be affected by things that yesterday you were affected by. Why? Because they Britney Spears you. You just you lost that tolerance because they had to keep one up upping themselves. And then your desensitization makes them even have to go higher than they did yesterday to get your attention again. So you kind of get it, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, I I get it. The the, the there's no end in in sight. There's not one news agency that's going to go tell the truth and be boring and lose ratings and advertisers and go out of business, right? So it's just if the consumers of the news decide, yeah, you know what? I'm in an era where I just want some truthful stuff, and we start paying attention to truthful stuff. I told my wife when we're driving down and we see an accident. Here's our new rule. If you feel like looking, you better be willing to jump out that car and help. If you're not willing to jump out and help, don't even bother looking at that, that car or that, that accident or that person pulled over. Why? Because that's what happens. We, we, we feed that parts of ourselves that want to, are interested in something, but then, you know, we don't want responsibility for doing something about it. So that's a, that's a good test, and that's a good way to kind of throttle ourselves down from being pulled into the dramatic and start removing ourselves from one of these dramatic things. Stop watching that crappy TV. Stop looking at... You know, the accident is you're going by and, and, and really start paying attention to quieter things. And when you calm your brain down a little bit, it gets a little bit easier and better. I don't know. That's that seemed like that was a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of complaining. And I promise I, I wanted to jump out of complain mode just for the sake of it. But, yeah, you know, anyway, uh, I do want to, uh, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about we haven't done one of these in a while. And I, I kind of promise to always. Um, you know, kind of give you a little bit of a lecture on what people are, are, are what's hurting people. Or earlier in the program, we talked about the scams that people are falling victim to. And we say that we're, we're afraid of the scam, but what does that really, how does that manifest itself in, into the real world? Um, you know, when uh, we talked to Morris Ray a couple months ago, 
you know, he he got hit with some financial things where they wiped out accounts and they billed him things that he was then responsible for. And he, he messed up his life for a period of time where he had to cancel all his credit cards and, uh, you know, he had to call and change passwords and he had to fight to get some of his, his money back and, and whatnot. And it was probably a month worth of inconvenience for that stuff to occur. And all that came from was one uh, you know, one one cell phone taking control and possession of a phone number and porting it to a, a, someone else's possession where if you have your phone number, y- y- you sort of have control of lots of other things. I mean, think about how many things when you log into your banking site, send a challenge uh, to your phone and say, hey, here, enter these six digits and then we'll let you in your account. Well, somebody has your phone. I mean, your password isn't as meaningful as having access to your phone number. So preventing uh, that, you know, calling yourself a phone provider and turning off the ability to port that number. Tell them, do not allow anybody to port this number without having this second level of authentication, having a passcode, having something to be able to prove that this is not an easily portable number to protect that. Um, and then, you know, the, uh, you know co- the stuff that you can watch. Uh, you can do the the services that look at your credit to see if transactions and c- accounts are open I- in your name. But you can also look at your activity. The two things that none of us are doing is being very vigilant on looking at credit card statements and transactions that we did not, uh, you, you know, that we did not do. So if there, I mean, do you really look through your your phone record to make sure people aren't placing calls out on your number? Of course not. There's too many transactions. It's getting too overwhelming. We're expecting that our phone provider is going to catch something. Well, same thing about, you know, the ACH stuff. There might be people billing your credit cards right now that you're not even getting services from, and they will bill your credit card forever, and you always pay it and have no idea that you paid for those services. So a lot of times just saying, okay, once a year I'm going to sit down with all of my paper transactions or even the stuff that I can get online and go and audit yourself. Go back through the information and see if it's all legitimate. You might be able to cancel, you know, 10% of the things that are billing to your credit card just because, oh, you know, I, I paid for a stupid alarm system on, on a, an office that I closed a year ahead. So I paid a year's worth of uh, uh, alarm service on a thing, and I didn't realize that it was it was hitting, hitting our credit card. That's just stupidity, and it's negligence. Uh, but if it didn't, if I didn't go through those uh, those credit card statements, I would have probably still been paying it. So there's a lot of you know you're, you're, you you got to think about it. Sixteen digit card number on a credit card, I could guess it, and sometimes the credit card processor will let it go through. You, it's not that you just you know do the credit card and you have the CV code and you have the expiration date and you have the billing address and you have the zip code. You know a good credit card processor is going to say, whoa, wrong billing address or wrong CV code or wrong expiration date, and they're going to stop the transaction. I've seen a lot of those transactions go through with uh, less than complete data. So uh, it's very possible that you're paying for stuff that someone slid in on your credit card. And if they do that with enough people, let's just say it's four bucks. We multiply that by a thousand people every month, four, th- four grand coming in. There's somebody who'd be willing to take the risk to have four grand come in. So my, I'm going to implore you to take a look at some of your records and pay attention to those. So it's cool to have the monitoring, but don't put all of your faith in having some computer, computer modeled monitoring let you know when you're being scammed. It's, it's the going through record by record. And if it does, if it smells funny, get it canceled. And, you know, uh, a little, little trick on, on my end, I regularly will have a credit card number get changed because there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I have too many transactions. So what I'll basically do is cancel the card. And then the ones that I know that I use go in and give the new card. And any of them that don't get the new card just die on the vine, right? Because there's, there's more that I don't need than I actually do need. So every year or so, uh, maybe not every year, maybe every two years. I'll just cancel the card altogether and let the, let everything that was billing to that die. So I have to be really geared up for that because that's a lot of work to take maybe the 10 or 12 things uh, and and update those. But it's far better than paying for stuff that you're not even getting. And because it comes up on a statement as some weird, uh, you know, hard to read description, you don't even know what it is. It's just easier that way. You know, for me, and, and a lot of the vendors, they'll complain about it, that uh, your, your credit card expired and your stuff's going to get discontinued and whatever. And that's fine. They'll give you usually when they, they, they can't hit your card, you'll get tons of emails and calls and whatever. So you get out of that. But it, it, like, it's really critical that you pay attention to, uh, you know, in, in an automated, fast paced system that you pay attention to who's hitting your bank account and your credit cards and all that kind of stuff. Really pay attention to it. And uh, I heard the attorneys the other day say, do not give uh, your debit card 
out as a credit card that's connected with your main checking account. Because a lot of people get hammered, right? So let's just say you got ten grand in your in your checking account, and that's you pay all your bills out of that, and that's your main account. And then someone comes along and they hit it for five thousand, right? They take everything that you have, and now you can't pay any of your bills. Well, you might get your money back, okay? But you might not either because it's it's a it's a bank account. And so, you know, if it came through a credit card, then the fraud prevention will usually cover you after the first fifty dollars, and you might be okay. But you know, in the time that it takes to get your money back, you might be pretty screwed. So here's here's another thing that I would do. Maybe with your uh, with your bank account, have get two checking accounts, right? And keep a majority of the the money that you're not going to spend this month in the one account, and then the other account only keep enough in there to pay that month's worth of bills. And that way, if it gets wiped out, it doesn't wipe out your main one. It wipes out maybe the one that just gets replenished. And so that that keeps you a little bit insulated. You're, I mean, you'll have to manage two uh, checking accounts, but that debit card on the outside account is is more open. And that way, if it gets in the hands and you get people trying to bill it, and whatever, you can cancel that one easier without disrupting your lives. But to have that main one is be the one that you expose to the rest of the world. You know, it, it, while, while the banks are usually going to make you whole, it's a pain in the butt to go through that process. Ask Morris Ray. You do not want to go, uh, you know, through that process. A couple of years ago, we had a, a company here in Youngstown that got, fell victim to an ACH fraud scheme where uh, there, you know, a lot, a lot of us business owners, when we receive an invoice, uh, we just kind of pay the invoice, right? And there's some scams that come through posing as real invoices that look legitimate. And if you don't have the right person behind the desk to receive an invoice to ask where to come from and where to generate, somebody might just accidentally pay an invoice or give pieces of information to someone who you don't want to have information to. Uh, there, there's this one scam where if you've got a domain that was registered with Network Solutions, uh, they'll send you this, this sheet. It's not Network Solutions that's sending it. And this is your domain, like your .com. Uh, they'll send you this sheet that says, hey, your domain's expiring. Send us $127 for your do- domain registration. And it comes through and says, oh, yeah, we got this domain. And yes, it is expiring. And they send a check. Well, basically what that sheet does is that transfers ownership of that domain to somebody you don't know and it pays them for it where you thought you were paying for your legitimate company and they just use it as a solicitation that looked like it was a bill and you don't know how many people give up the right of their domain to these other people and they pay them in the meanwhile so be careful when when you receive those incoming uh, domain expiration things uh, that look at them make sure compare them against what uh, who you pay for your actual domain and make sure it's not a different company because you might not only have to pay them, but you might lose your domain to somebody else. And I will tell you, it is really hard to get the domains back once you've uh, granted permission to transfer. Fortunately, most of us, and this is this is another thing you want to check, if you, if you have a tech person, I want everyone that has a domain that's valuable that you would really not want to part with, uh, make sure that you turn off transfers. Right, just total disable transfer. So if anybody puts a request to transfer your domain, it is denied because you have transfer ability completely off. It's almost like freezing your credit. No, you, you have to intentionally open it up to transfer in order for a transfer to occur. Even if you request the transfer, it gets denied because you have transfers disabled. So tell all of your tech people out there to check your domains and make sure that you have transfers disabled. I don't care if it's at GoDaddy or Network Solutions or Two Cows or any of those other places that do domain registration. Have them check because that's really important. You don't want to lose your domain to somebody because you had enabled. If you have, if unless and now if you're going to be selling your company or you're going to be transferring it, uh, you don't obviously don't want to do that if you're really legitimately get going to transfer. But if not, we don't transfer domains all that often. You could just keep it on disabled, and if you ever wanted to enable it, it's easy enough to log back in there and transfer it. So just a little word of warning. There's some tips, and, and again, it, it keeps us all safe because I, the, these people who scam us, they're constantly probing at our weaknesses. So if I tell you what our weaknesses are, then some of you can you know, set up defenses against those weaknesses. But as soon as you set up those defenses, they go on to something else, and I'll have to remind you a new set of weaknesses down the road. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back, take some more of your calls and uh, text messages, 330-729-9977, or text me at 333-1570. You're listening to the Youngstown Computer Show on 570 WKBM. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks, Dave Price, for putting a bunch of Metallica in there today. He knows that I love Metallica, so that's awesome. I hope you all enjoyed the the, uh, the bumper music. Uh, I love that Ron Burgundy is coming, uh, making an appearance. I, it, was, it was a requirement when you worked at Youngstown Computer that you had sort of these uh, dark cultural comedies, uh, Office Space, and, uh, and obviously Ron Burgundy, and some of those other—what uh, uh, was that with um, Gold— 
gold member. Well, I don't know. Anyway, a lot of those comedies were were sort of a staple in our office. But the, this sort of like meshing uh, these different medias with uh, entertainment, where you, you kind of foresee in the future that you're you're going to be sampling the things that you enjoy and are entertained by. We're not just going to have a solely musical thing, but you also have comedy and you have video because you can all do all of your devices are going to be able to do it all. And, and so, whereas sometimes, you know, like when I'm listening to an audio book, right, I just want, even if, even if there is video along with it, I'll just listen to the audio book and that's good enough. I'll be working out or running on the treadmill or outside running on a trail. I'll listen to an audio book. I don't need to see anything, right? So you're going to see some of these medias sort of like com combine different ways of experiencing them. And I listened to the Ron Burgundy podcast the other day, and I'm, I'm used to seeing because he's it, Will Ferrell is a is a really good comedian, and 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 his physical presence goes along with what he says and does, and he's just a funny guy. Just like uh, Chris Farley was the same thing that he, you know he was more physical, and it just complemented the stuff that he was saying and made it all that much funnier. And I, I have a lot of respect for that era, so I'm glad to see that uh, maybe that kind of humor comes back. And, and it's really dumb humor, and I love the the, the stupidity of that humor. And, and another good comic that I like is uh, uh, Adam Sandler. The guy's real hit and miss. He he has, you know, brilliant stuff that's super funny, and then some stuff I just shake my head, and I just don't even know how that made it past, you know, the, the producers. But, I mean, it's all—he he has some really classic stuff, and— and uh, and like I said, I, I, I'm glad that that kind of era is kind of making its way back. I really enjoy that kind of stuff because I'm, I'm telling you, some of the entertainment, I, I can't even really watch many movies without saying, yeah, I, I saw this exact plot remade 72 times already. I mean, how many times can you just say, tell this exact same story with different actors? It's almost like we're being exploited. You know that we're going to show up when you see certain people and they're like, OK, we got these five actors that are willing to do this thing. Uh, give me a script. Right. And then so they just pull something off the shelf, change a couple of names, give it to the script. And then it's a it's a hundred million dollar, you know, blockbuster. And then people like me are like, eh, you know what? Where's the writers on this? There's some really talented people in this. How, how did these actors get this script kind of a thing? So I know a lot of people that are in theater feel the same way that that I do, that they're uh, they could have done a better job, a little bit better works. But what, what brings people in droves? It's not it's not the, you know, the really stimulating, the intellectually stimulating one. It's the stuff that makes stuff blow up and, and, and the more simple versions of that. But it's OK. I mean, it, it is for everybody. But I'm just I was feeling a little alienated with the types of entertainment that were coming out of Hollywood and and stuff like that. So it's, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm being well served. I'll, I'll put it that uh, there was a news article here that Apple is slashing their HomePod pricing. Uh, and it's significant because that's the only sort of like vi uh, assistant, like digital assistant, where you, you can talk to them. It's the only one I didn't buy because it was too damn expensive. And and so it looks like that it's like 200 bucks now. I would still consider that a little bit expensive. I think I can get an Amazon Echo for about 100 bucks. So for these Apple uh, HomePod, uh, its prices come down, but I don't know if that's significant enough for me to go buy one. It still seems a little bit pricey, but maybe, maybe I will. All right, uh, we're going to end the show for today. We're, we'll catch you guys next week with another, and, and I'll try to be a little more optimistic uh, instead of complaining about everything, but I got that all off my chest. It's all done. So everybody have a great week. We'll see you next week. You have now listened to the Youngstown Computer Show.